Hello guys and welcome to the post-match discussion of the Liverpool 4-2 win against Crystal Palace. What a game. Not many people get four goals against Crystal Palace at home. The LFC cast. In association with LFConline.com. Please like, share and subscribe. So that was a very, very good result. I'm here with Greg. Greg, what did you think of the game? I thought it was a, an exciting game. You know, it could have been it could have been anything, couldn't it? Yeah. It could have been. 5-0, it yeah. could have been 4 all. it could have been 2-2. Two -two. Football matches can be any scores, can't it? It could have been, I was going to say, <laughs> it could have been 9-0, 1-1, 1-0, 2-1. Let's just go through the spectrum of numbers. <laughs> but I think you know what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when we started at the beginning, I thought, you know, it, we're going to win this 4-5-0. And then we got a couple of goals, they came back into it. And I felt, once they scored... We tended to sit back a little bit, especially in the second half, which yeah. we don't normally do. We did. Our, our best way of playing is just attack, 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 and that, we didn't seem to do that. That is what Klopp wants from us, just to attack, attack, attack. Um, but on this occasion, I don't think we could, because, you know, Crystal Palace were, were coming at us quite a lot as well. Definitely. And I think that, you know, the mistake that Lovren made to concede the goal, I think that put us a bit more on the back foot, and it was how we respond to that. And I think we did respond to that, I think we responded really well to it. We did definitely know, and I think what we were scared of is we've got they've got Ben Teke there, and yeah. as soon as they put crosses in or balls into the box, you know, it yeah. could be dangerous, Cardi. So I think that worried us a bit. Yeah. But you know, I think we're great at going forward, we can score goals, but I'm just worried a bit about that day when suddenly we can't score as many goals and then yeah. we're still conceding a couple of goals. That's it, we've got to shore up defence. I was watching match the day actually and he was talking exactly like that. He was saying, you know, we're great going forward, four or five goals every time, but we're conceding in every single game. Yeah. And if that then goals start drying up, what happens to us, you know what I mean? We've got to be able to do what the big teams do and just get a nick a goal, sometimes come back and sponge up them attacks and get a win. That's how that's how people win the league. Definitely, and I think it just comes from our defence, doesn't it? You know, we've had that for season after season now, where we just make mistakes in defence, and the one by Lovren, it was yeah. just ridiculous. Oh well, we've been told by the way by a friend of ours to disagree with each other, haven't we? So uh, just to spark debate in the comments below. So I'm going to disagree with Greg now. It might seem forced, but I, but I will try it out. I disagree with you, Greg. I thought I thought Lovren was great, and he didn't. That mistake was fine. <laughs> Okay. Let me know what you <laughs> So what we'll do, we'll go from back to front and talk about all the players in the positions and we'll go through the goals as well. So we'll start off with Karius. Now Karius, I thought he had a good game. You know, Mignolet did well early in the week when he got a start in the, in the cup. And I thought that, was he going to start, wasn't he going to start? I'm glad he didn't because I think Karius deserves a chance, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely no. And I think with him being a Klopp signing Karius, I think... He's going to have to make a big mistake, Karius, yeah. to be taken out of the team. You know, Definitely. He's won a club signing. And it's a shame for Mignolet, you know, mm -hmm. but I think he's going to be sat there for a while on the bench. And he said, he said lately, you know, he's not going to be happy with him being number two, mm -hmm. but it's going to be difficult for him. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult for him. And I think that if he stays as a number two, he'll want to go elsewhere. That's just the way it is. I think he's a good keeper. I don't think he's a Liverpool number one. I think Karius... Could be a Liverpool number one, the Jordy's still out a little bit, he's a young guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's got bags of potential. Um, I think that, you know, Mignolet might just go to another team in the summer or in January maybe. Hopefully he doesn't, because I'd love him as a subkeeper. Yeah, he's great, isn't he? You know, he's great to be able to bring in. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, I think Karius was pretty solid in this match. He was, yeah. yeah. I think the only one, well, the only one mistake for me is... Their first goal, you know. Lovren, he, when he made the mistake. his hands in the air. Yeah, you know, he had he, his hands down, didn't he? Jumped yeah. up and had his hands down. If he put his hands up, he might have been able to block it. But it was Lovren's mistake. Yeah, exactly. You know, Karius was a bit rubbish on the on the reaction, but he probably was surprised that it came towards him in the yeah. first place. So, okay, then moving on to the defence. We've got Klein, Lovren, Matip and... Moreno! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I think he's, he's a great player going forward. But he's really shaky at the back. Definitely. And, and he's a left back. Yeah. But I thought, you know, first 10, 15, even 20 minutes, I thought he was going to have a good game, you know. I did, yeah. It's a great assist for the first goal. Yeah, and he hit the post as well. Yeah. So that's fine. Great an attack. But, you know, he's, he makes so many mistakes at the back. Some of his passing from the back was a bit erratic. Yeah. Tried to use a bit of skill at times, especially in the second half. And he was passing it to their players, Crystal Palace players. Um, I think Milner's a lot more solid. And I think that's why Klein's got so much interest about him. 
because he doesn't score that many goals and he doesn't set that much up. But he's bombing back and forth and he's a solid defender. Yeah, you know, and in, in that game we said uh, Clyde's not getting us forward as much as normal. Mm. You know, he's not making as many chances as he normally does. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because he was defending well, which he was. Mereno doesn't do. He doesn't do. I mean, we need that from a right back. We need someone who can do both, you know, going forward yeah. and going back. Uh, Lovren and Matic in defence, how do you think they did? I thought Matic was superb, you know, I thought he was really, really good and great goal as well. Yeah. You know, Lovren, there was a few mistakes in there. To be honest, I think he was our worst player and that's maybe a bit, a bit harsh. And, you know, he did redeem himself, his head yeah. didn't go down, he got a goal back, but, you know, coming from defence, yeah. I, I do. I would give him our lowest rating. Oh, I disagree. I think that, I do disagree, I actually disagree on this one. I think Lovren made a mistake. But he didn't keep his head down, he didn't, he got on with it and he, you know, he got a goal, he recovered it. The second goal for Crystal Palace, he maybe could have got the header as well. So yeah, I can see where he's coming from with two goals conceded. But as the game went on, I think he become more and more solid and I think the partnership between Matip and Lovren is great. I think Matip is fantastic, I think he's going to be a great sign for us. That header was a free header, do you see how gangly he was when he headed it? Like, <laughs> But overall, I think Matip's going to be great. Moving on to the midfield now, we had Henderson, Lalana, and Emre Chan. So Emre Chan got the goal. What do you make of Emre Chan? He's great. You know, he's doing really, really well. He was out for a while. He's coming yeah. back in. He's getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. More confident each week. Yeah. You know, and I think Wijnaldum's going to find it difficult to get back in the team. And I really like Wijnaldum, and yeah, I think okay. he should be in the team. But you know, where does he come in? Definitely, Greg. I think Emre Chan's really, really good. I think that when Adam's a brilliant player, and I preferred him, you know, up until yeah. yesterday, really. Um, I thought that Emre Chan, by getting the goal, has boosted Klopp's confidence in him. Yeah. Uh, and I think when Adam's going to have a tough time. Definitely an option, though. I think he'll be coming onto the pitch, and I think he'll be starting a lot as well. So, great to have the option of Emre or, or Wijnaldum. Uh, moving on to Henderson, he does a great job, doesn't he, Greg? Brilliant, really, really he, good. He tidies things up, he makes little passes. Some people think, what's he doing? But yeah. he's doing more than you realise, isn't he? Definitely, because I said to you, you know, when I was at the game last week, there's people around saying, Henderson's just passing it to the side, mm -hmm. he's just passing it back, you know. But that's part of his job, isn't it? You know, tidy things up, keep holding the ball, get yeah. up, keep that possession. Yeah, and not many people will notice this, but Henderson actually set up Firmino with an amazing pass. The yeah. pass that he done cut right through for Firmino, lobbed him, lobbed yeah. the keeper. It was great. Fantastic ball. Brilliant finish, we'll move on to that later. Lallana had an okay game for me. I, you know, he's been sensational for us. I think he's yeah. been one of Klopp's best players. Uh, and he was running the same, you know, he was getting in for every challenge, but I just don't think he was as effective as he usually was. I wouldn't say he was the worst player on the pitch, and I wouldn't say Lovren was either. I disagree with that. What do you think in the comments below? So yeah, Lallana had an okay game for me, but he's still really important, isn't he? He is, yeah, definitely. And he did just have an okay game, but you know, the amount he runs, you know, he's yeah. always getting back. Yeah. Sometimes he doesn't have to do everything in the no. game you know just that work rate he puts in does he, he pulls defenses apart yeah. doesn't he, he that's does, the thing yeah. so off the ball he's doing more than you realize a bit like henderson yeah um so moving on to attack we had cortinho for me oh, oh it's for me i know i know i know all right Dan, dan's alone. got a problem where he just says every player's name wrong no i don't because i happen to love for me i like cortini no and i also like oh 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 well, in our first take of this, yeah. you, you called Chan Henderson, didn't you? Henderson scored the goal. Hen I thought Henderson scored the goal, and I was saying to Greg, no, it was Henderson, Greg, he scored yeah. the goal, and he was like, so we had to stop it and off Pretty sure off. it was like, Chan. Chan. Henderson? <laughs> Sounds like a Chinese, Simon. Henderson! Henderson, instead of Henry Chan, Henderson. <laughs> so the front three of Firmino, Mane, and Coutinho, an amazing front three, and that, there's a reason why Sturridge can't get a game at the moment. Yeah. All three of them are just fantastic. They all provide a little bit of difference between them. You know, Firmino and Coutinho, both very skillful players, yeah. but Firmino's more of a front man, a finisher. Coutinho's more of a skillful man. And Mane is a very, very fast player who can just change it up in, in an instant. Definitely, no, and it's Firmino, not Firmino. Did I say Firmino again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but they're a great front three, you know, most probably the most dangerous front three in the Premiership. I would say I so, think, yeah. I completely agree. You know, and Coutinho's just, he's, we say all the time, but he is a little magician, isn't he? He can do anything on the ball. Do you know the last little magician to be as good as Coutinho? Paul Daniels! Not a lot! <laughs> <laughs> no, but <we'll see. laughs> you're such an idiot.
Yeah, but you know, I think we're lucky to have those players, Firmino, Coutinho, you know, they're yeah. just so, so dangerous. And you can understand why Barcelona yeah. and maybe other teams like Real Madrid may come in for them in the future. Yeah, definitely. It's a worry, isn't it? Especially it is, yeah. in the summer. And the thing with Firmino, I mean, I said it again in the game that we were watching the game together. And I said, you know what? He needs to do more for me, you know. He, you know, he never scores enough, and then all of a sudden he just lobs the keeper. Yeah, you need to say that more often because every time you say that, he scores a goal. <laughs> every time I say, I go, listen, Greg, he, he's great. He's you know, he's a great finisher. But he needs to do more. He needs to be more concise. He's just lobbed the keeper. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a fantastic finish, wasn't it? Amazing finish. Bit silly that he took his top off. I mean, it doesn't matter now, but a yellow card, you know, it adds to suspensions. That doesn't it? Adds yeah, to the amount of games. You know, and if he'd got another yellow card like five minutes later, you know, would have lost a player. I think Klopp will speak to him about that. You know, he'll praise him for his, for his goal and what yeah. he did, but he'll have a word with him about definitely, that. definitely. Mane as well. He's such a different player. You know, he's just a fast player. He's he a good finisher. Fair. He should have bagged a couple of goals. To be fair, he did bloom one in the first half, and he had a great through ball from Coutinho and. He did the keeper done well to be fair, keeper but he well, got his leg out, but he should have maybe finished that as yeah, well. He should um, have. But we know he's getting those chances and hopefully he'll start scoring more and more this season. Yeah. He is so dangerous, he's so quick. Yeah. You know, and as you say, Coutinho and Firmino, they're like little tricksters, little yeah. flicks, little this. And Mane can just bomb at them, you know, he's so, so good. Well, that's what happens, I think, a lot of the time. Crystal Palace are too busy dealing with Firmino and Coutinho. And then all of a sudden, Mane's just belting it past them. Yeah. So they're like, whoa, no, you know what I mean, run back, yeah. run back. So it's a great front three to have. Sturridge is going to have a problem this year, I think. He is, you know, and he's going to become more and more unhappy sat on that bench. But mm. I understand why he's there. Yeah, I do. You know, he's a great goal finisher, but he's not doing it at the moment. And Firmino, Coutinho, Mane, who are you going to take out and bring Sturridge in? Well, the funny thing is, in the cup game early in the week, you know, he scored two goals. And I was like, oh, he's class, he's class. And then come to the midweek game, sorry, the weekend game, and I was like, I think he should still be on the bench though. It's like it's sad that, isn't yeah. it? But it's a shame. But I love Sturridge and I hope, you know, I wish him the best and I hope he does start getting goals and start banging them in. Definitely. It's a great problem for Klopp to have. Yeah, definitely. And that, we need to keep those players, we need to keep them happy. Yeah. You know, Klopp's got a lot of work to do to keep everyone happy because yeah. we don't want to lose those type of players. We don't. We need we need good rotation in the team. So moving on to our man of the match. That was a little segment I thought I'd introduce a little. Yeah. No, don't do that again. We'll cut that one out. All right. Now, uh, next is the man of the match section. I think it was Coutinho. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I think Coutinho was man of the match. You know, he, he was everywhere. He's yeah. so dangerous. Every time he gets the ball, you know, he could have a shot. He could flick it over to someone else. You mm -hmm. know, he can do so much with the ball. You know, and defenders just don't know what to do with him. Definitely, I think Coutinho was the man of the match, and it's a good thing that we're giving a man of the match to, the, to a player who didn't score. Because sometimes it's too easy to go, oh, man of the match was uh, Firmino, because he yeah. scored. I keep saying Firmino. It's Firmino, Dan. Uh, Firmino! I am a true Liverpool <laughs> fan. I love Liverpool. They're my favourite team since Man United back in the 90s. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note, guys, we hate Man United, and Dan. Um, I just want to say as a disclaimer that I, I didn't mean to say that, it was meant in jest. Um, I just want to say I apologise to my dad, my family, the fans, I've let down. If any, if uh, Greg, let down Greg. Um, yeah, in Klopp Club. But I will talk about <laughs> the in Klopp Club. But I will say this about United, it's great to see them going lower and lower down the table. You know, Mourinho getting sent to the stands. Yeah. You know, Herrera getting sent off, it's getting better and better each week guys. It is indeed guys. Yeah, so Coutinho was man the match and it's great. I know he didn't get a goal but he set up a lot and he was just orchestrating the game and he looked a bit like Lloyd Christmas didn't he from Dumb and Dumb yeah, with his hair. Like a side <laughs> pawn. Yeah, oh, that was ridiculous. Anyway guys, that's the end of this video so I hope you've enjoyed it. You know, leave in the comments below who you thought your man of the match was and we'll um, see you all next week. See you all next week and never walk alone. Bye bye.